You might have a problem if she has daddy issues. I'm Paul, apexmindset.net. Hit the website to book a consultation. Like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Now let's talk about daddy issues. All right. We're going to discuss daddy issues when daddy is absent. Okay. So she grew up, grew up with an absent father. Now there's other issues too that a girl might have with her father, uh, a, the narcissistic overbearing father is one type extra strict, maybe abuse, the abusive father. And those can be the same, right? It's just the narcissistic, uh, overbearing father can be too much and get into abuse or serious abuse issues. Of course, uh, if that happens, or, it could just simply be where it's more of a helicopter parent where daddy's more, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's daddy's little girl syndrome, right? So those are other things. But we're going to talk about just if simply daddy, dad isn't around, all right? The father is not, either he's emotionally absent, mentally absent, or physically absent. So he might not actually be there. She may have grew, grown up with a single mother or perhaps dad was there, but he just wasn't very well engaged as a parent. Okay. And it could be that dad was beta or incompetent as well. And just didn't really raise her or, you know, loved her was around, but really wasn't a good, strong father figure in her life. Now, this can cause issues later on in pair bonding relationships or LTR stuff. A uh, question when I posed the question to my uh, subscribers on YouTube, some topics, this came up a couple of times. Guys wanted to talk about the daddy issue thing. Usually what we run into more often than the overbearing narcissistic father or the daddy's little girl uh, father or the outright abusive father, we run into the absent father more because a lot of times the father's there, right? But he's just not a leader of the household. He's not a strong dominant presence in her life. He doesn't demonstrate authority. He doesn't demonstrate those things as household. This is what we see more and more now. Okay. We see more girls, especially girls under 30, 35 years old who grew up with a father that just wasn't really dialed in. Okay. Maybe he was beta workhorse working multiple jobs. Maybe he just, the mom ran the household, whatever it may be. He just wasn't there. He was absent as a dominant figure. And so we run into just a number of problems with young girls when that happens and they start to become sexually active. And then this further creates problems later on when she's in those relationships and she's trying to, you know, have a healthy relationship with somebody in a long-term situation. Okay. And because you got, you have to understand that behaviors don't exist in a bubble. It's not like, okay, she has a daddy issue and that's in a bubble and then nothing else happens. It's just a problem with her bonding with her, her parental figure. It's, it's not like that. What happens is those issues as she's growing up without having a strong father figure in her life creates her to do behaviors and responses to things out in the world, which then causes other problems and damage and worldviews, for example, and habits and behaviors that are just not conducive of being a good, healthy partner and any sort of relationship. And we'll get into that and categorize that a little bit. So it's easy to more or less understand. So first let's deal with sex. Okay. So sex is a major component. Sex is the driving force behind any relationship, right? Dating, any of that stuff. Okay. So how she handles sex and her sexual, you know, her sexual growth and reactions can get really destructive and self-destructive without a strong father figure in her life. 
basically without a strong father figure in her life with an absent father, that leaves her with a void that leaves her with an emotional void. She doesn't feel taken care of a young girl needs to feel taken care of and protected by a dominant male force in her life. And with absence of that, that leaves her with, you know, an absence and a need for having an alpha male in her life. Right. And so what then will tend to happen is she'll seek validation from other men from men early when she becomes sexually active. So when her sexual desire starts to develop, she will utilize her sexual desire in order to seek validation from men. This leads to a host of problems, which sets her up for failure later on in terms of being any kind of healthy partner. Understand that with well, boys and girls, but particularly young girls, uh, the sexual drive develops before the emotional maturity and her sense of identity happens. Okay. A, four, a 13, 14 year old girl is horny. All right. Uh, at different times. Okay. But that doesn't mean that she's mentally mature, emotionally mature to handle uh, sexual interaction with somebody. Um, and she certainly does not have a developed identity at <clears throat> age 13, 14 to be out there in the world having sex with people and being influenced by the outside world in that manner. She's not really a woman, right? She's still a kid at 13, 14, uh, my opinion, all right? So what happens though is they don't have that alpha male presence in their life and they want that, they need that, they seek that validation and so they start having sex early. Early sex is an indicator of problems later on, okay? Early sex correlates usually to higher number of notches going through more sex partners in her lifetime and uh, before she tries to marry or, or have that long-term thing, um, long-term monogamy or anything like that. And as we know, the marital failure with women is directly correlated to how early they start having sex and how many sexual partners they have. So theory is that their pair bonding mechanisms or ability to bond with somebody else is compromised with multiple partners and promis promiscuous behavior and early sexual behavior, which makes sense because they're not emotionally ready for early sexual behavior yet, okay? And they start early to fill this void because they don't have a strong male presence or figure in her life. So that's one of the biggest sexual problems that we see that, that creates a massive problem for them later and a problem for whatever partner they try to choose and try to pursue a long-term happy relationship with. They find themselves simply unable to do it, okay? Because of the pair bonding. Uh, they're more susceptible to ruining that mechanism for themselves, all right? And pair bonding, just so you understand, quick definition, it's the ability to... After having a sexual bond with somebody, having the ability to have that neurochemical reaction that would cause, be, be cause for them to want to fulfill their sexual needs with that particular person over other random people out in the sexual marketplace. Okay. So there is hyper, you know, hypergamy, of course, which is, or hypergamy, however you want to say it, which is her desire to level up and her desire to mate upward. But provided that a guy satisfies that there is a mechanism of bonding as well, where she wants to, she gets those happy chemicals that oxytocin from a particular person she's sexually familiar with versus maybe a stranger. Those, the bonding chemicals end up being compromised. This leads to breaking marriages, getting bored really early, cheating behaviors, entertaining other men, just simply feeling emotionally asexual and aloof and not wanting to be with their partner anymore after a period of time and simply destroying the relationship. So that's how these things show up. And you start, start having girl starts having sex early because of daddy issues and starts going through multiple partners and racking those numbers up. That's how we get there. That's how we get damaged women who can't have healthy relationships. Okay. Uh, other problem too is they tend to gravitate because they want alpha men. They're not, that's the presence that's missing. They're not just fulfilling sexual needs with the random young little chads running around. That 14, 15 year old girl is looking to date older men usually. All right. 
which is even more damaging from a sense of hypergamy. When a 14, 15 year old kid, all right, she's a kid because she's not emotionally mature yet, uh, wants to be sexually active with a 20, 21, 22 year old man, okay, what ends up happening is there's a power differential that likely cannot be recreated later on in life, meaning no other man can come in and be her alpha best sexual option. All right. Because even if let's, let's paint this picture. Okay. 14 year old girl or 15 year old girl, let's say 15 is about the average when a girl loses her virginity. So let's just say 15. All right. Hooks up with a 20, 21 year old guy. All right. That 20, 20 year old guy, even though it's only a five to six year difference, is an adult male where she is still a kid with a lack of emotional maturity and problems because of the absent father on top of it. All right. She is emotionally vulnerable and there's a power differential. That 20 year old can do things, drive, you know, especially if he's 21, drinking age, get access to alcohol, drugs, whatever. And things that she just can't access at 15, not throughout, not unless she's going through an older person, right? So she'll want to, those, those young girls that'll hang out with older people, the 18, 19, 20 year olds hanging out at 14, 15, a lot of those young girls don't have strong father figures in their life. So they're gravitating towards these older people. Now there's an element of wanting to do that anyway, whether it's a daddy issue or not. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, women, when young girls do want to date and mate with the older guys and that continues for the rest of their life pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Until they're old themselves. So, I mean, that's, that's not relatively normal, but there is a element of being that being on hyperdrive, you know, that's even more uh, a potentiality for that. Okay. And it's to fulfill that need that, that dad isn't fulfilling. If dad is absent at work all the time, is not watching what she's doing is very aloof, not very authoritative in the house, doesn't set rules or boundaries. Mom's doing all that work for him, right? He just lets, he's letting mommy and the school system raise his daughter, all right? He's emotionally absent, mentally absent. Maybe you've seen also as incompetent, right? Or if he's in and out of the house through divorces and things like that, this leads to a situation where a young girl is seeking that alpha male presence that she's not getting at home through a man in the sexual marketplace when she starts having sexual feelings and desires. And then if that's that 20, 20 year old, one year old guy, here's what happens. The power differential is so great. Even if that 20 year old guy is a complete douchebag, right? Well, that power differential is so great that he will, he will, the experience she goes through emotionally is, way more elevated than she'll ever experience later on in life. Like, so in other words, she was 28 years old and ready to settle down and she meets like a super alpha guy, right? Well, he, that guy may never be alpha enough to create that same power differential that she had when she was 15 dating a 20 year old douchebag who's not very alpha, maybe, right? It's the power differential because of the maturity difference that creates this alpha widowing situation where she can't essentially top the emotions and the strong feelings she had for that guy when she was 14, 15 and that, and she was dating an adult. You see, there'll never be another time in her life where she'll be a kid, not emo emotionally vulnerable and not mature. Although of course they, all these young girls think that they're adults, but they're not. And this person it has all the power in the cards, right? That, that power differential can't be repeated. Usually young girls can get alpha widowed in these situations before they even get their start in the sexual marketplace. This will make it so she'll never be able to be happy in a relationship. All right. She'll seek out. I mean, she'll, she'll never be able to find that person to top that guy. And if, and if that guy also is her first like takes her virginity, even worse. You got a 15 year old girl and a 20, 21 year old guy takes her virginity. The chances of her having the, the, the guy that would have to come into her life 
would have to be so dominant and so alpha and so sexually powerful that we would just have to, it would have to just greatly override that initial imprinting with that power differential. Very hard to do, you know, very hard to do right for the guy or for her to find that guy. So, you know, that means that she is really set up for failure. And so are you as a guy trying to be a normal person and date, you might not be super Chad on super Chad steroids or anything, and you don't need to be okay. But if you're with daddy's daddy, daddy issue, absent father girl, who was 15 year old, 14, 15, losing her virginity to a 21 year old, you see what I'm saying? You are set up for failure period. And so that is, and that's what I mean by a, a series of decisions and things that happen that lead to her failing in the sexual marketplace. Okay. All because she didn't have a strong male figure in the household in her life. A lot of you men listening to me are fathers and you're fathers of daughters. So I want you to hear what I'm saying so that you take an interest. If you, <laughs> I hope you already are, but you take an interest in your daughter, her upbringing and being an authority figure in her life, not her buddy. You know what I mean? Cause she needs that strong male presence. And if she doesn't get it from you, she's going to seek it through boys or men when she's a teenager, you got it. And when she's sexually active, that is not the answer that you want. That could destroy her abilities to have a healthy relationship as an adult, or at least greatly hinder it. But usually I say destroy because women tend to not go get help for things like this. They tend to not go work on themselves for stuff like this. And most mental health professionals have no idea that this thing is even a problem or even exists, even though the research is out there and they wouldn't know how to fix it either. That's some of the main issues with sex. Okay. As an absent father can cause maladaptive attachment styles. So she can be very clingy if she's anxious attachment and we'll get into attachment stuff in a little bit, but she can be very clingy to, to guys then that she's dating and she's always, now here she is sexually active, looking for a male figure to replace dad through the boys at school or through even adult males at the party she's going to at 15 or whatever. And she's latching on or clinging on to these boys, right? And these guys are not emotionally mature either. And they're not going to handle her well. And she's going to find herself getting emotionally damaged and kick to the curb and having all kinds of problems. And that will then lead to more problems later in how she views men and how she approaches the sexual marketplace as an adult. So she becomes 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, right? She's out on the carousel and running through men and partying and doing whatever and having unpair bonded sex, random sex, vacation sex, one night stands, party sex, all that kind of stuff. Right. That's what she's doing now because she had those feelings of neediness and wanting to attach to a male figure when she was sexually active, when she was in high school, younger, and those didn't pan out well because those boys, even the adults that shouldn't be dating the 14, 15 year old, the 20, 21, 22 year olds usually aren't emotionally mature either. Right. And so that puts them on a path of destruction. So they do further self-destructive behaviors with drugs, sex, and, and so on uh, as they age. And then they're not going to turn, these girls don't just turn around uh, 26, 27, 28 as high value women now who are going to be good mommies and good partners to a high value man. That's just not how it goes. Right. Cause it takes work effort, and you have to actually work on yourself in order to be a compliment to a high value man's life. And these girls just don't have it. All right. They think because they can, you know, give good head and, um, and, and off and party really well and, and drink really good that that makes them valuable. Well, guess what? They're not, you know, they're not, they're, they're, they're trash that gets kicked to the curb and they've done it to themselves all because, Dad was absent, <laughs> didn't have that authority figure. See where this is going? All right, so we'll talk about authority some more. They have an issue. So there's the sex part. Sex part's the biggest reason why they screw themselves up, okay? Puts them on a path of destruction. And so then you meet this girl, and let's say you're 32, 
years old and you meet her, she's 29, right? Or, oh, hell, let's say you're 42 and she's 33 or something, okay? And now she has a history of running through the sexual marketplace um, with damage and trauma and problems that she created for herself because of these issues. So she's not going to show up on that first or second Tinder date or whatever and announce that she has daddy issues. You'll just notice that she has daddy issues. And then that's what frames all this behavior. You know what I mean? That's what causes her to have a lack of emotional maturity, mental maturity when she comes to the dating market with you. Okay. This is why these are problems. So now authority, let's talk about that. So a woman needs to be able to submit to male authority in a relationship. I know that's a controversial statement for some of you, but it's a fact and that's how we're biologically wired. The man needs to be able to step up, lead the relationship. She needs to see him as the, the best genetic option. Okay. That doesn't mean she doesn't have a say. That doesn't mean she's never argues. That doesn't mean that she never gets upset with him. That doesn't mean that she doesn't have control over herself or that she can't make decisions for herself or she's weak. None of of it means those things. It just means that when they come together, he's the decision maker. That's sexual polarity in most relationships, even down to dating. The guy is leading, courting, deciding where they're going, so on and so forth. In the bedroom, the guy is leading. Get what I'm saying? And so... For that to be the case, she needs to be able to submit to male authority to some degree. Women with daddy issues have a real problem with that. There'll be women that are watching, that'll watch this video, hear me say that and scream into a pillow misogynist and want to call me names for talking about the facts. All right. These are women with authority problems. Authority problems show up when she didn't have a father in her life or a dominant male figure in her life. Okay. Because that means she grew up with a lack of authority in her life, a lack of oversight. This is the girl who's 16 years old and smoking pot every day and her parents don't do anything about it. That's that girl. You get what I'm saying? No authority, no oversight. This is the girl that goes out and sneaks out at night at 14, 15, 16 and does whatever she wants, okay? This is the girl who's essentially running her own life with no oversight by the time she, before she's emotionally and mentally mature enough to handle it. And all these young girls think that they are, but they're just not. Then that leads to what? All the things that teenagers do. Drug use, right? A lack of discipline, a lack of discipline in school and in academics, a lack of agency, uh, entitlement, arrogance, All of these things show up because she is essentially running her own life and there's no authority figure that's telling her what to do. So when an authority figure steps in to tell her what to do, she doesn't respond too kindly to that. This is a problem. These are the women that are the strong, independent women. Okay. Strong, independent women often didn't have a strong alpha male figure in their life when they were growing up. Okay. So without a strong male figure, that's what you end up with strong, independent woman. And it only makes sense, right? Because she had to take care of herself and she had, she did not have a man around to provide her with any sense of security whatsoever. She didn't have a man around when she was growing up that she could respect and rely on. So even if she loved her father that she grew up with and she loved the man, does she respect him? Does she trust his judgment? Does he make good decisions for her and the family? Does he have authority over her? And if the answer is no to all those things, she has daddy issues from an absent father. And what that means is she is going to have a hard time relinquishing control in the relationship, something that is a requirement for her to be, number one, attractive to any kind of high-value alpha male, and number two, to have sexual polarity and have a healthy relationship. Because the reality is she will be attracted to the guy that is dominant alpha and does demonstrate authority, but then she'll resist that authority, be defiant, create arguments, create problems, be a detriment to that man's life instead of a compliment. And uh, if he's a high, high top shelf man, he'll kick her to the curb, right? It's only going to be the controlling the, the beta males and the weaker males that she can control that she can manage, muster up a relationship with. And she won't be happy with those guys either. 
And so this can be a serious problem for her. Problems that you get to deal with, congratulations, if you're handling a woman who had an absent father, all right? Now, none of this is damning, right? Of course, she can overcome this stuff, get better insight and all that and make changes. I, I don't suggest that, that people don't change or women don't change. But understand that women need a emotional uh, incentive to, to, to do the work to change. That, that's, that's how their brains are wired. A woman has to be bought in emotionally. Either something is causing her pain in her life and she doesn't want to experience that anymore, or she wants to experience good feelings by setting certain goals. And that's what will cause her to put the effort and discipline in to fixing problems and changing and taking a real good look at herself. But that daddy issues girl is compromised there because not having a strong authority figure a male authority figure causes her to have a greater sense of entitlement and a greater sense of arrogance and a lack of agency. So that's already problematic for women in general, especially in the West and how their brains are wired with solipsism. Okay. It's hard for them and, and their need to be the good chimp. I've talked about that in other videos. So that already compromises their ability to say, yeah, you know what? I screwed up. I was a bad person when I made those decisions, time to make different, different decisions already compromised from doing that. Most women, not all, some are, I've met some really emotionally and mentally mature women that, that can do that stuff, but, and have that agency, but most have already compromised with that. Throw in a daddy issue and not being uh, used to an authority figure, not growing up with that, and then being resistant to authority on top of it, because she had to take that control over her own life far too early before she's emotionally, mentally mature, what happens? You have a woman who just simply will not ever admit she's wrong and never fix the problem. Does that sound like a good relationship to be in? I don't think so. If she has daddy issues, what I'm saying is don't discount her necessarily because the father was absent. Just recognize the traits and the things that it causes and look at that stuff. If she, for example, an entitled woman who can never have agency and never admit fault is not somebody I would ever have be have a long-term relationship with period end of story. That is a hard stop for me. And it should be a hard stop for you. In my opinion, I don't care whether what, 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 da what dad did. <laughs> okay. I care about the behavior. So I do recommend you pursue it that way, but we are talking about daddy issues and people wonder why is it a red flag? This is some of the things that happened. Okay. And this is kind of, this is the reasons why. So so yes, that makes her controlling, defiant, all those things. Let's see. So on top of that, though, even though she's resistant to authority, she has a strong desire, whether she realizes it or not, for a dominant alpha male. I mean, they all do, but hers is really strong in the sense that it was absent. So she has this weird dichotomy that she brings to the table where she just defiant of the authority of a strong alpha male that he naturally presents, but she craves it at the same time, right? So this leads to these tumultuous love-hate situations with certain partners, right? Where she's constantly challenging certain partners who try to execute dominance over her. It takes a very specific partner for her to have the trust to submit and to be the a submissive partner and allow that man to lead without fighting him. Okay. But she will gravitate towards dominant males and that's especially sexually. So usually that will show up sexually because it's safer for her to, and socially acceptable even for it, for her to be dominated in the bedroom, but then to be defiant outside of the bedroom. So this is what you'll see. Okay. And it's in, in a lot of women, most women want a dominant man, want a man who's dominant in the bedroom. And because of social conditioning might be a little bit defiant. Uh, it's because she's a strong, independent woman, whatever outside the bedroom, but she's hypersensitive towards this, this control and, and has a need and, and a propensity to not want to give it up. So what does this mean? This means she goes through more a holes. She bangs more a holes. She heads towards casual relationships with a-holes versus guys who would be a strong pair bonded pair bonded partner all right guys who are narcissistic selfish douchebags idiots right these are the guys she bangs so she is putting loser 
ding dongs into her VJ. Okay. I love the words I come up with so I don't get censored from YouTube. That's what she's doing. She's putting losers inside of herself. That's, that's a big part of what she'll do. And she's going through her promiscuous phases and she started early doing that because a dominant alpha male scares her one that's actually dominant alpha and who will set standards and boundaries is actually frightening to her because she's going to defy that authority. And so she'll resist that. But the guy that demonstrates some of those behaviors, cause he's a jerk and an a-hole and doesn't care about her. Oh, she'll, she'll be all about that. And so then what you're left with, right? You're left with a woman who is literally putting losers in her body. So she's gone through, let's say 30 partners and she's, you know, 28 years old, wants to get married to you. And she's been going through a series of casual partners who are complete losers and a-holes. How healthy is it? Is she going to be for you? Right. If you're a healthy male who's top shelf, how healthy is she going to be? How good of a compliment she's going to be to your, to your life? Probably not. Right. Which is why she'll end up being a one, maybe 10, five or 10 night lay and then when she demonstrates that she's not capable, she'll get kicked to the curb if you're on your stuff. But of course, if you're not and you're trying to play Captain save a and all that stuff, uh, you're going to take her in and, and be in for a nightmare of an experience. Um, lastly, we'll talk about the attachment problems. All right. So without a dominant male figure in her life growing up, she can develop an attachment disorder or maladaptive attachment style. This means that she could show up as being avoidant, right? And this is the person who will have that casual sex and then not call somebody the next day and then, you know, do things to prevent any kind of emotional bond from happening in the relationship. You get in an argument. She doesn't talk to you for three days because she disagrees with you. She's mad. All right. These are avoidant personality traits. These are avoidant attachment styles. She does this because she's trying to shield herself from being hurt and abandoned. And that's the other thing is abandonment issues. All right. Abandonment issues are related to attachment problems. Okay. So her, you know, worry about being discarded or being abandoned will cause her to avoid, be avoided and self-sabotage. That's one style. The other style is anxious. This is the crazy person who's going through your phone, who's stalking your, you know, pages, who's showing up at work unannounced, who's acting really clingy, needy, creating drama and problems, blaming you for looking at other girls when you're not looking at other girls, you know, stuff like that. Okay. The crazy attachment style. She's also self-sabotaging, puts you in a roller coaster environment. You're out for a mentally unstable situation. And next thing you know, you have to leave or discard her. Or she makes a demon or, or bad guy out of you because of her problems and then ends up discarding you or cheating on you. So forth. Okay. These are things that can develop from serious daddy issues growing up. So with this attachment problem, back to what I said before, she'll pine for and throw douchebag uh, wieners into her body, <laughs> okay? And have a lot of casual encounters with D-backs. That'll be her pattern, okay? Because she doesn't want to have a healthy attachment with a guy that's actually worth something, all right? She's not, that makes her uncomfortable. These, these having an absent father figure can be a catalyst for BPD or NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, borderline. If, of course, her genetic makeup is as such that she could fall into that. If she had a really dysfunctional upbringing, that even more so, okay? Um, Self-sabotage, as I mentioned, because of the attachment problems. And she, she might repeat an abandonment narrative, okay? Um, seeking validation from other men while in the relationship can happen too, because she grew up with an attachment problem, meaning that there's a void she's trying to fill. And so while in the relationship with you, you guys have a little bit of conflict or it just gets a little bit boring after the honeymoon phase, or you get busy with work or you go away on a business trip or go away uh, for military service, for example, I got military guys. What happens is she starts seeking validation from other men, opening herself up to cheating because she is not emotionally strong. She is in fact insecure, has low self-esteem. Two other things that can happen when she has daddy issues and daddy is absent, right? That 
creates a situation where a girl can have that self-esteem problem, low self-esteem, insecurities, and those insecurities lead to her seeking validation. So on the one hand, she's a strong, independent woman and defiant and entitled and arrogant. But then on the other hand, she feels empty inside. She feels low value and she needs to seek attention from other men because she didn't have healthy attention from her father because father was absent. Okay. Uh, she can't model a healthy relationship either. She doesn't even, a lot of girls with daddy, daddy issues who were dad was absent or dad was in and out of the house, or they have several father figures. You run into that too, because mom was, you know, dating around and stuff or marrying several guys while she was growing up. What she end up with is a situation where she cannot model a healthy relationship. She doesn't know what a healthy pair bonded relationship looks like. She didn't see it from mom. She certainly didn't see it from dad. So she has to recreate the wheel now. So these are all major issues. And this is why daddy issues are real problems with both young girls. And when young girls grow older and are in the sexual marketplace looking to date and mate and have kids and marry and do all that stuff that you guys think about. Okay. And so you have to be very careful if a girl's family life is unstable and if a girl is gone through issues with her father, or if you notice there's a disrespect there or a, le a level of competence that he doesn't have or, or whatever, he, he, if he's just not a dominant figure in her life, or if she was left her own devices growing up, these are all serious red flags. Okay. Now it doesn't mean she's not salvageable. You don't just look at a girl's past and then judge future behavior. I know there's going to be someone in the comment Who's going to who's going to say the best predictor of future behaviors past blah 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 blah? Okay, whatever, bro. <laughs> Here's the thing: you just got to look at the behavior she's doing now and interpret it properly. All right. So the daddy issues cause these other behaviors. You need to recognize if these other these the actual behaviors that she's showing up with with you exist, and you need to take your time for these things to unfold. You're not jumping into a commitment after dating a girl for a few weeks, right? Or the first couple of times you have sex with her. Now you're going to be in this monogamous relationship or you're going to be committed and give your commitment away. You don't do that. That doesn't mean you have to be sexually all over the place, but it just means that you're not giving away and combining assets, living with somebody, getting in a serious commitment with somebody until you've given it some serious time, especially when she has signs of having daddy issues you need to give it time for things to unfold and for these maladaptive or bad patterns to surface and come out and you know what though a lot of these things will show up pretty early that come to think of it like her you know not not being submissive not submitting to male authority for example and allowing a man to lead the abandonment issues or attachment problems like these things usually do kind of crop up early but a lot of times what will happen though is you guys will be blind to it because she'll be throwing her vagina at you and so when she's throwing sex at you right and the sex is good you're not thinking with the important part of your body you're thinking with the feel-good part of your body and what happens right you get yourself in trouble so Think with the big head, not just the little head, guys, and recognize these traits and problems. Now, for some of my female listeners, and particularly for some of you dads out there, all right, who are raising daughters, who maybe have screwed up, okay? Maybe you screwed up and didn't give your daughter a, first, a, a, good, a good start. Maybe you were with somebody and went through a divorce and she didn't have a good model growing up. And that causes some of these problems. It's never too late to salvage anything. All right. Um, it, it's, it's start becoming a part of her life and start work and recognizing these, these patterns that might exist and start working towards getting her to a, on a better track. And if you're a woman listening and you had daddy issues, these are probably patterns that you've had in your life or you currently have now. And instead of being defiant with what I'm saying or not accepting 
these facts and these flaws that you have, okay, that doesn't make you a good person to deny problems, all right? Uh, what makes you a good person is to address these problems and to start working on these things and recognize that these things need to be worked on so that you can be a good partner for somebody if that's what you want later on in life. Okay. Being a good partner in any kind of long-term relationship, even, even casual relationships takes work. Okay. It doesn't happen on accident. And so if a girl isn't, has these problems, has these daddy issues, you need to set some hard boundaries. And if she's unwilling to make changes and unwilling to start taking control of her life and demonstrating agency and not being so arrogant, not being so entitled and recognizing she has some flaws she needs to fix. If she's unwilling to do that. Well, you guys know what to do, right? There's other women out there. All right. So hopefully this all makes sense. Hopefully this has addressed this topic very thoroughly. I mean, hell, there's a couple of other, there's two other versions of daddy issues that I haven't even addressed. This is just the most common one, I think. Thanks again for the support. Again, uh, like this. And this one's a good video to share with people as well. All right, it's not so divisive. Well, some of what I say will always be divisive, but this particular video isn't so uh, into the red pill or men's health space that other people can't understand it. So it's a good one to share. Thanks again for the support.